This is part six of my explanation of uh, Newton's Principia. Uh, he is going to create, a, he's, there's a five sort of stage proof here. And Newton is going to start by showing that in this diagram that ES uh, is the same length as, uh, as EI. And I'll write that down. So ES is congruent to EI. And this is not obvious, but I'll tell you, the, the reason that ES equals EI is because um, SC and CH are equal because uh, S and H are the two foci of the ellipse. That means that SH is double SC. Well, um, IH was made to be parallel to RZ. And since DK was parallel to RZ also, so is EC. So we have here basically is uh, similar triangles. I'll just say because triangle ESC, ESC is similar to triangle ISH. I'll just say that I'll put a little um, times two, meaning that since uh, SC is half of SH, all the sides are half. So that means that ES is half of EI, which means that ES and EI are equal to each, to each other. Next, he's going to try to prove, or he is going to prove, that EP has to be the same length as AC. And this is uh, one of the more complicated parts of his entire proof, proving that, that EP has to be the same length as AC. And he, here's the way that he does it. He starts by saying that PS and PI together, well, PS is the same thing as ES uh, plus, plus EP. So PS plus PI is the same thing as ES plus EP plus PI. But he's already proved that ES and EI are equal, so this could be changed to EI plus EP plus EI. Sorry, that's, that's meant to be a uh, PI. But EI plus PI, if you look at the picture, EI plus PI is the same thing as EP. So we have equals 2 EP. Uh, so we can summarize this fact, or we can restate it by saying that EP is half of PS. plus pi. Now we know because uh, because of property of the ellipse, since p is on the ellipse and s and h are two foci, the two foci of the ellipse, ps plus ph is a constant. And that constant is always equal to the major axis, which is equal to 2ac. So there we have a sort of another fact we'll, we'll put aside. Um, another property of the ellipse is that, and this was mentioned in the last tutorial, that if we have this tangent line RZ up here, um, that angle RPS, which is also angle RPI, will always be congruent to angle ZPH. So basically if you draw a line uh, from P to one focus and a line from P to the other focus, that the angle that those lines make with the tangent will be congruent. Now, IH is parallel to RZ, so by alternate interior angles, um, R, RPI is equal to this angle, and PHI is equal to this other angle. So now we can say that we've got this isosceles triangle, PIH is an isosceles triangle, so we can say that PI is congruent to PH because of the isosceles triangle. 
Uh, we can do some substitution. Um, we already had that PS plus PH equals 2AC. So now I can say PS plus PI equals 2AC by substitution. Now from before, we have that, uh, that EP is half of PS plus PI. So now we can replace that PS plus PI in that with 2AC. So EP is half of 2AC. That's by substitution. And the halves cancel out and we end up with that EP is the same length as AC. Now, um, the lattice rectum, which is the, uh, which he's going to define with the letter L, the length of it. Uh, the official property of lattice rectum is that L, or the, the size of it, is uh, L over 2BC equals 2BC over 2AC. Lattice rectum is geometrically, it's, it's, it's the length of the, uh, of the, um, the cord that goes through S is perpendicular, but even without that, we just have this constant that's just related to BC and AC. So L equals 2BC squared. He's just defining a constant with regard to this ellipse. Now, he says, if I take QR over PV and I multiply top and bottom by L, I get that this is just a fact that QR over PV is also equal to L times QR over L times PV. Now going back to our diagram, uh, EC is parallel to QV, so it's also parallel to XV. That means that this triangle here, PEC, has to be similar to this little triangle, PXV. And because of that, I can use uh, I can say that PX over PV, those are sides of the smaller similar triangle, is equal to PE over PC, which are sides of the bigger uh, similar triangle. Now, QR PX is a parallelogram, so we can say that PX is the same thing as QR. Just write down a parallelogram there. And from before, we already have that, um, that EP equals AC. So now we can put this all together to say that L times QR over L times PV is equal to QR over PV. But QR, we established, is equal to PX over PV, but PX over PV we've established is equal to PE over PC, but since PE is equal to AC we get uh, his first major conclusion is equal to AC over PC. This here, that L times QR over L times PV is equal to AC over PC. Not an obvious fact and not one that seems rel seems that important, but uh, that is going to be a major, uh, one of his five uh, proportions that he's going to build on. I'll slide, up, slide that up a little bit in case it got cut off. So we have now concluded part one, which is actually the longest of, his, of the five parts, he has established this unusual proportion that L times QR over L times PV always equals AC over PC. We'll call that equation one. Why that's important, you'll see in future parts. So this is uh, to be continued in part six. These uh, were, This was the longest of the five parts. So I think this should be done in about three more parts.